Coldplay, the scientist. Have you seen the video of that? Great, it's just brilliant. I, I think I might have worked out. What, 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 it's, he's, he's walking backwards, it's all filmed backwards, but he's singing forward. Now, the only way I can work out they've done it, without CGI in it and cheating with the lips, is that he had to learn, learn it, to it backwards, it backwards and did it sort of like bit by bit. Did he do that? He was on Zoe's show like about a week ago or oh, something and so he, he sang it backwards. So he learned phrases and they filmed that. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't learn the whole song, did he? They must have- he couldn't possibly have learned the whole song. He must have like stopped it and- I don't know. I just it's a great know. video though. They always do a yeah. good video. No, it's very good. Very good indeed. So it was, uh, yeah, The Scientist on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkerton. I had a bit of good news this morning. Go Rick. on. Um, I was on the tube coming down, and, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but, um, I was at Green Park, and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated, I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. yes. Th th there's a lot of pop uh, pickpockets around Green no, Park, no, no, so no, be no, 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 my wallet was still there. Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent, but, <laughs> the, but, but, but the, but the wallet was still there, so how- <laughs> what do you think of them apples? Eh? So what did you just pinch your I don't- I can't confirm it at this stage, uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round, there By was- a woman. There was a woman behind me. You're right. She was fairly old. She was, I think she's probably in her mid thirties. Right. Um, kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But uh, she knows where I am. And um, so I don't know how to proceed really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could just do to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky you, guy's arse, no, we could, you could probably get in uh, contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CC exactly thing, CCTV cameras, yeah. And then they could probably zoom in and you know, so identifying sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some. Then I could hire a private eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so, there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying, I mean, I'm just saying maybe the, you know, maybe things are looking up. Things are- getting towards Christmas. D the worm has turned. Hey, I don't, I, I mean, you know, it's a little, uh, sexy story to get the show going. <laughs> it is, it is but, pretty so what sexy. what do you make of that then, Carl? Really I know that, you're Carl. quite damning. Um, What's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to, sort of, reach up and and have a pinch. Mm. Do you know well, what you mean? think she, she was a dwarf? Did it, she, she did it with her teeth. He didn't say she was a dwarf. No, no, but Steve's taller than, you know, his arse. Yeah, but his arse isn't six foot nine, is it? Oh, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F four foot? What? Four foot off, off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three foot. She'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's arse. He is very tall, but... Yeah. I don't know what nice your point one. is there, Carl. You're just- see, you're just trying to- you're, you know, you're just- uh, yeah, I, I think maybe she's a little bit jealous. Just a little bit uh, of jealousy. Well, do you know what happened to me on the way in? Go on. A homeless person called me a dickhead. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> do you know him? Is right, that why? He's a local- he's like the local big- no Big issue fella. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he know- he knows me, he sees me walking up and down the oh, street. Oh, that's how he knew you. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I normally have a- have a bit of a chat with him and that. And I walk past him. And, um, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, I can I can be a little bit cheeky with him because I've been cheeky with him in the past with stuff. Um, you pinched his arse. No, no, no <laughs> just, you know, saying stuff like, God, you're always there, I mean, you got home to go to and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, no, just he, breaking the ice, just breaking the ice, go no, on. He yeah. knows, and he'd laughed at that, right, yeah, last time, yeah, so I thought yeah. I can be a bit cheeky, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, do you, a, do you a big issue? I said, nah. He said, come on, I've got loads of them, right? So I, I sort of said, oh, w when I was a kid, and he used to do a free paper round, the free papers one. I said, just put them in the bin and go home. <laughs> right? And he went, yeah, but how am I going to get any money doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> you see, yeah. I can see his point. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. is homeless and having to sell newspapers to get 50 pure a quid or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes I treat him, right? And today I didn't have any money. I had a takeaway last night and I normally give them a quid and I felt bad not being able to do that because I didn't have any money on me last right, night. Right. I couldn't look him in the eye. Did last you night. explain this to the homeless person the traumas of the <laughs> takeaway without the tip? <laughs> Did you explain that, you know, y you've had it hard as well? Yeah. I go, look, you don't I know had what food delivered to my warm flat. Yeah. It was yeah, a you don't know what that's like. You don't know what the trauma is because you can't have food delivered to your flat because you haven't got one. So please don't look at me like that. You should have said. But most people ignore him. At least I gave him a bit of acknowledgement and sort yeah, of- Yeah, took the- took the mick. 
Yeah. I didn't think I was, I just was being yeah. friendly. Yeah. No, I know. You gotta be careful with the homeless, cause I- this is- I, this is true, and this is- I- you know when the clocks went- was it- the clocks went back recently? Yeah. So you got an extra hour in bed? Yeah. And um, I was at cash point with a friend of mine, and there was a homeless person sat by the cash point, <laughs> and um, was, you know, we would get some money out, and she said spare some change, and my friend's like, oh, he's a bit awkward, he's just trying to make conversation with her, he went, oh, clocks go back? Extra hour in bed? Oh no. I gave her two quid, I felt so bad. <laughs> oh, he didn't God. do it intentionally, he didn't no, realise no. what he'd said. Oh, just no, making just conversation. Bumbling. It's oh. tricky making conversation with the homeless, cos there's so many areas you ca- you've got to avoid, you know, oh, no. what was on the telly. Yeah. You know. Although I get recognised by homeless people and they are, well, are they, I don't know where- Well, you got to remember that's very much your demographic, Rick. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, people, people who watch TV through the window of Dixon's. Yeah, in Dixon's, <laughs> yeah, there was a- the Ring to Vases on top of the telly. Well, they, they can smell the alcohol on you, they <laughs> think you're one of them. <laughs> oh, I've had to cut down on that, I've all been really good with this training thing. The boxing. Uh, oh, oh, play a record and I'll tell you about that, I had my first week of training. I'm- I'm in trouble, I'm struggling. What do you want to play? Oh, well, we've got a bit of, uh, have we? Stone Roses, classic. Feeder, come back around. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Alright? Uh huh. Yeah, so I, st- I had my first week of training for this, um, charity boxing. Um, for those people who don't know, I'm, I'm fighting Grant Bovey, uh, Anthony Turner's husband. Um, it's, it sounds arbitrary, but it's actually because he's, uh, at 41 and about my weight, a bit taller, I think. But, uh, and we've never done it before, but, um, no, it'd be, it'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Battling someone for charity. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but, um, it, 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 it's, and I can't believe my luck because I've, you know, I've been a fight fan for like 30 years and, um, and they took me shopping, they bought me all the gear. And uh, the training's great. It's really hard. I mean, it's. Uh, I imagine it'd be really hard, and it's probably slightly harder than I imagined. And the only bit I like, so the, 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 I, I, I don't like all the exercise and all the stuff you've got to do. I like the bits that look a bit like something I've seen in a Rocky film. Right. Sure. You know, sure. we did that thing with the uh, the string along the ring, and I have to pop up and punch, and that, right. that was great. Right. Nice. Uh, skipping's not bad. I'm trying to get good at that. I like that ball that you go. Yeah. Are you any good at that? I'm getting getting good at it. And what's that teaching you? That particular thing. It's just the rhythm, is it? It's it's rhythm, and of course your arm were up for that long, so it, it, you've got to keep your guard up all the time. Yeah. So that teaches you to keep and your you arms were, up. And you were, uh, up at six this morning, you broke some raw eggs into a cup and then you <laughs> ran up the steps of the town hall, didn't you? I know. Well, with those of people following me, and I shouted, Bovey! <laughs> at exactly. the top. No, I'm not going mad, I'm not going mad, just, sure. just, 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 you know, once every, you know, every other day. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm struggling now, I've, 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 I woke up today and I, it was like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. Just everything aches, so the muscles you haven't used. But, um, anyway, I had a meeting, uh, the first time with the, with the people, the program makers, cos they're following me for a month and everything, and Grant as well. Um, and they said, oh, um, uh, you need a sort of nickname, just for a laugh. And I went, oh, what's Grant using? And they said, oh, I think he's gonna use gorgeous Grant Bovey or Grant. I went, oh, I don't know, um, oh, gosh, so I, better, I better go against that. Um, what about, um, Ricky Gippo Gervais? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, 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 yeah, so, uh, anyway, I had a freaking with Frank Maloney meeting the next day, and, uh, it's sort of like, uh, you know, you've got to do this nickname, and the bloke said, oh, I checked out that name, you can't call yourself Gippo. I went, well, of course I can't, <laughs> I was joking. He went, well, I said, well, it's racist, I was joking, I was making a joke about me, but, and then he went, oh, I don't know. And then, uh, I went down to get the, um, buy all the gear from this shop. They'd have the dressing game made? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was picking all the stuff, I was going, oh look, that's like Naz War. Oh look, that's like Ali War in the- and I'm going, I'll have that, I'll have that, picking all the gear and everything. And um, there was a couple of boxers down there, sort of like looking at me, thinking, who's that fat bloke taking yeah. up boxing at 40? And uh, I said who I was and and the uh, bloke went, oh yeah, how are you doing? I went, oh yeah, so how long have you been in the game? He said, I've been boxing 20 years, so how many fights you had? He said, about 40. And I said, oh yeah, help me, I've got to think of a nickname. And I thought, I said, uh, I thought, uh, Ricky Balboa Gervais. He went, right. I went, or Ricky Marciano Gervais. He looked at me and went, what about Ricky Martin? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, dear. Absolutely justified. Yeah, I, I, I'm not respected yet in the boxing world. <laughs> no, sure. But, I mean, it's only a matter of time. Once well, they I see think they're going to go see your fight, really. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna change. So, uh, that have you good. actually have you actually punched anyone yet? Have you actually not any? No, no. I've punched, 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 punched pads and I have punched the uh, the bag and I've sort of sparred and that. I know you're gonna get a chance to well, punch. Well, someone. as I suspected, um, my my punching power's alright, but my fitness is. I mean, it felt like I was smoking. Yeah. You know that there's you know bits of lung that haven't been had oxygen in them for twenty years. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And also because 
it's not only it's being filmed, but there's the other fighters there that are ridiculous. They're like machines, mm, right? Mm. And it's that thing I go, I can go, right, I can, I can come out on top but die now of a heart attack but never give up. Or yeah. I can sit down and go, I'm sorry, I'm, I yeah. feel ill. And I chose that one and of course they took the mix. Well, of course. But I mean, absolutely. you know, soon. Uh, you know, as I said, I haven't got the respect yet of the boxing <laughs> fraternity, <laughs> but it's How long have you got then before- Four uh, weeks. Okay, so, yeah. and, and do they think that they can turn you around health-wise in that time? Uh, no, or they're being really stick. Out Zimmer no, they're gonna, they're gonna, the you know, they're, they're gonna teach me the ba basics and see how it goes, you know, right. but I mean, um, you know, and I'm- And each round is four seconds, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two four second <laughs> yeah, rounds. With, with a yeah. two hour break in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> a sit down um, meal. So, uh, give them a number, I want, I want serious suggestions of my fighting name. Nothing insulting, so what we can actually use. Well, let's give out the, the email, that's always the easiest. Yeah, Ricky exactly, Dodger yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number, Carl? Um, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. And it doesn't have to be in the middle, it could be at the beginning, like... Okay. <laughs> the Rage. Okay. Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. the Rage. Ricky the Tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Ricky the Man, rest <laughs> player <Yeah>. record. <laughs> Big it was a good day, us. yeah, Ice Cube. Yeah. Uh, talks to me about my life. Yeah, in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. A yeah. <laughs> no. couple of emails are already coming in, Rush. They're flooding in, Rick, yeah. inevitably, uh, as boxing name suggestions for you. This is one from Matt, I think. Uh, he's given a couple, actually. Ricky the Pudding Gervais. <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky Big Mac Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th there's a theme here, Ricky Pasty Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> the Pasty. I quite like the Pasty. That's it comes great, the Pasty. It? <laughs> as, as Carl said, he said, the thing is, if you have a really good nickname, it's embarrassing when you lose, whereas if you just call yourself yourself, it's not so embarrassing when you lose. Carl, this is doing so good for my <laughs> ego. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If you have, like, Killer Gervais. Yeah, and then you end up, like, vomiting, yeah. choking on your own vomit upside down, exactly. hanging out the ring. What happens if you win? Do you have to do something Whereas, properly? there goes the pasty being stretched off <laughs> in the first two minutes. <laughs> Yeah! It's not such a problem. <laughs> there he is, being lightly basted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and chuck down a mine. <laughs> what do you mean, what do I have to do? Say if you- say if you beat Grant, say- Yeah. Say if that- if that happened. Yeah. yeah right. Um, <laughs> you, what- what happens next? What do you mean, what happens next? What? Do you think- oh, this is a- a contention fight for no, the no, big no. one. But do they- <laughs> they, 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 Yeah. Well, that, then we make Ricky too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but, you know- <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if they're planning on making more money? Because it's for comic relief, isn't it? So what happens on the night? No, it's it, no, it's for a charity. Of our comic choice. relief would make sense. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Whatever, right? Yeah, it was last time. I think it was last time. Is it sport would... relief? It's not sport. It was last time. Oh, right. Yeah, but this is. I think this is a program where. The, and, and how do we? Sorry, how does this? How do you make money for charity from this? Do we? Do we pay to, to sort of for how many punches to the head you're going to take? Or no, no. I just how think long you're going to last? I assume the BBC donate. Money or someone, or a sponsor or whatever. So I don't know. Just right. donate. Because right. it's actually a program. This is more about a program with a, I think I see, a, I a charity angle. So uh, yeah. So as if if you get like killed, there's more money and food to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but no. I mean, the thing is, what's the next step? Because if they go like, right, yeah, well done, you've won. Thank you very much. Well, Carl, what do you expect? That, the, that it's winner stays on? <laughs> yeah. Like, in a fair, <laughs> where I go out there and I let people right, punch me in the- on Bruden Manning. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, then, and then my twin gets up. Yeah. What, what do, what, it's just a- it's a program. He's it's not like, gonna turn it's, pro. It's like faking it. Yeah, but what's the point if it's not gonna go anywhere? Well, uh, a what, a Sorry, him fighting Grant Bovey in a ring is not entertainment enough. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Carl? That's gonna get his face pummeled in. That's gonna be no, hilarious. But, right, when I did boxing at the youth club, once right. when he did boxing, he fought once. He fought a little weak kid because it was his first day. Battered him. Next week it was someone else's turn, and he got bad and he left. <laughs> yeah, I said right, I've had enough. But there was, there was <laughs> yeah, there, there was a ladder there that I had to work, right? And I decided after the sort of the, the first step, I thought it's not for me this. Mm. Yeah. But if you win, it's all kind of like right. Well, yeah, the world's your oyster. But it's a program. It's just a one-off program, isn't it? It's it's like it is like you got to treat it like faking it. Yeah, but faking it, right? That little gay fella who ended up being a doorman, he's actually doing that as a proper job now or something. He loved it so much. <laughs> Do you seriously think <laughs> I have any intentions of getting into the fight game and leaving <laughs> entertainment behind? Well, what's the point then? <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean? What's the point in what's What's the point in watching television? It's entertainment or educational. I, I watch it to sort of soak in. Well, this is educational. I'm learning a lot. I'm actually learning a lot, and it's I can't believe my luck. 
I've got professionals telling me, you know, hopefully how to lose weight and punch hard. That's just fun. It's like, like having golf lessons. Right. But say, I mean, here's an example. Go it's on. A, it's a nice way to plug it. We've got Rockbusters coming up in about ten minutes or something, right? <laughs> Now, Look forward to that. <laughs> people, yeah. people email in and they don't just do it for fun, they do it because they know they've got some good prizes lined up. Right. So they're doing it because it gets them something. Yeah, my, my prize is that I've learned something in life. I've gone through an experience and hopefully I'll come out in some way better if I don't get mashed. That's it. That's the uh, prize. That's why we do anything, isn't it? I think this is this is an example of you, Carl, is that you give up too easily. Yeah, you know, and you, you suck up the box and you, you gave that up straight away. You think there's no point in anything? I did, I did Crusaders for a, I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's, What's that? Crusaders? Well, he was, my mate, right, he, uh, <laughs> he, was, he, he was religious. Uh-huh. And, I, and I, I'm not, really. Um, but. No, I mean, you believe in ghosts, though, and shadows pushing people off bikes, but go on. But it's the same time, I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was going to tell me dad. Yeah. That was <laughs> effing and jeffing. So he said if you come- <laughs> <laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, l I love that what kid that, yeah, he hasn't quite got, uh, got the idea of the protection game. <laughs> There's nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right, so, uh, so I went to church with him and that and then the next week he said, I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with the tennis ball in the pews, right? I don't think we've heard that but I don't think we could possibly <laughs> well, go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Well, no. No, we, come on. We'll it. come back that's, to that. That's, 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 you okay. had a tennis ball and some pubes. <laughs> no, in the pubes. pubes. In the pubes, pubes right. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing. It's a bit boring. <laughs> um, Sorry. And so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades. <laughs> No, the, the it's called, it's the, called crusade? the Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh -huh. right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Right. So I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. They had Sabutio, <laughs> uh, play table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember God <laughs> gave you yeah. all this. Well, yeah. it's sort of, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games, you can play, uh, table tennis and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk with your friends yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's all right. I think you'd right. be happy in a young offenders institute. <laughs> You get to clean uh, the toilets there. But as don't well. forget, Carl. I think God invented Nintendo too. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that was all right. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. I mean, mate said if you go for four weeks, four like weeks in a row without missing a day. Yeah. Uh, you get a free badge, you know, and like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like <laughs> yeah. all this sort of being stuck in stuff. Do you know, right. what I mean? that's yeah. what yeah. Yeah, get down. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, it's like oh, every day. Yeah. Right. So um, anyway, so so you've got to come again on Sunday. So I thought, well, we'll have another game of table tennis. It'll be all right. Yeah. So anyway, I go on the Sunday. <laughs> who oh. was this? Who was this servant of God? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I go on the Sunday. It's like a totally different club. There's no table tennis. <laughs> That's how they trick you. No sabutio. Yeah. They start handing out Bibles. Oh. And it's I like a timeshare like, thing. Hang on a minute, right? <laughs> they trick you. So, so I didn't go again on Sundays. I used to just go on the Friday. Just go on the Friday. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I'm amazed no one else saw through that. <laughs> 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 well, the thing is, there used to be loads there on the Friday, so they won't, they won't even notice if that yeah. I'm not like, yeah, do you sure. know what I mean? <laughs> that I'm not showing up on a Sunday. So anyway, uh, carried on. It was just this kid in the vicar. Oh, I love that. You you got one over on the church. So yeah. I, I was loving it, right? Playing table tennis and that. Yeah, and no then uh, on a Sunday, phew, they found out where I live, and the head fella started coming round, knocking on the door. God. <laughs> The, the He's everywhere, Rick. <laughs> Why did he knock? The fella who- Politeness. <laughs> the fella who, like, ran the club, he started coming around knocking on the door. And I saw him coming up the path and I said to me, Mum, oh, it's the fella from the Crusaders. Yeah. She didn't even know what I was- No. In. She, she, she was thought like, you were off nicking hubcaps and stealing cars. She yeah, didn't yeah. have a clue what I was it's talking like about. You've been going to, yeah. church. to church, I don't you believe it. little bleeder. That's not how we brought you up. <laughs> so, uh, I said, look, just tell him I'm, I'm not in, tell him I'm not in. And then she had to keep doing this and they were coming round every Sunday to try and make me, like, Go, yeah. go on a Sunday, it was yeah. really important that I went and that yeah. I was abusing the system and all this. Anyway, I didn't go, um, and then- Why didn't they just tell you on the next time we turned up on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I d because there was so many people there on a Friday, you just get mixed in in the crowd. Yeah. Right. It was jammed, it was well popular on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But anyway, on one of the Sundays, um, it was, it was quiet for a bit, and, um, they stopped coming round. So I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because I used to avoid hanging around the house in case- What sort yeah. of reign of terror <laughs> is, is this? Incredible. Right. Yeah. So, so I thought, right. It's like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, great, they forgot about me. 
Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on in sort of normal life now. Yeah. And I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday. Uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> so that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. Oh. And it was like three of us in the back. So, I said- <laughs> that record? So. Next time, was he, it came, a joke? Next time he came round to pick us up, I said, look, really enjoyed it and that. I said, but ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again because it scared me a bit. I right. said, all right then, I didn't have to go again. That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah. He almost killed you in a car crash. That's a parable. Thank, thank God no one was hurt. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I remember that-, that Your life moves in incredible ways. Yeah. Rather like God. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so they're, prob go. they're probably round there now, aren't they? Going, is he coming tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> what we got? So well, are we talking about the prizes next? Well, let's talk about the prizes. We've got the, yeah, we've got the big game rock busters coming your way soon, Rick. I know you're excited about that. And like, is there more educating Ricky this week? Have you got that planned? There is. We are struggling on that feature a bit now because I feel like we've, we've covered a lot of topics. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know. Well, I know about hairy Chinese kids yeah. and deaf people that hit their head and can hear again. Sure. So I don't think there's lots more to learn <laughs> in life. <laughs> And the amazing Carl Pilkington. Right, prizes. Yes, them. Rockbusters. Yeah. It's uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's gonna get ditched, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> rumours there that Carl Pilkington, the creator and mastermind behind it, has already <laughs> grown tired of it. It's <laughs> off in the way. You heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that. We played sure, uh, sure. I Wanna Be Adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now then, really, isn't it? Second hand, yeah. yeah. 50 years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you there's some great stuff on here. Oh, Opens, Rick, with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One of, the, one of the big, biggest uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that enough already, you're followed then by uh, John Lennon's Imagine, Candle in the Wind, Elton John. You've got uh, all, all on sorts one of CD, Stephen. Well, it's, I think these are the greatest team, so they, rock minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Go on. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> <laughs> That's on there. Uh, we've got. Uh, let me see. Culture that is pretty Club impressive, though, because they are real big classic number ones, as opposed to you know the the, the, the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on uh, this. Is not available in the shops, and it's you know the second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM because it includes uh, Robbie Williams' "Angels," yeah. uh, Atomic Kittens' "Hole Again," Spice sure. Girls' "Wannabe," Connie Minogue's uh, "Can't Get You Out of the Head," and I think it closes. Well, it almost closes with "Steps Tragedy." That's the penultimate track. It ends though. Uh, any ideas? Yeah. A big, big hit single. But Do they know it's Christmas Band Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, that. sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album. Is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And signed by the man himself, the Big Beach Boutique uh, DVD, Fat Boy Slim's uh, concert on that Brighton Beach. And uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. Three <laughs> hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch exactly. this I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, That's but just look uh, forward to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. Is the crowd loving it? Here's me. I'm just waiting. This is where I, I put, I go from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. That's one of my own. I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got praise you ready. I'll just, <laughs> yeah, I've just got, got that. That's slightly dusty. I've just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, look forward to that. <laughs> Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is a uh, box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found while I was clearing up, Rick, because I know there's not a big movie this week. We normally give away a big movie. Oh. I was moving house this week and yeah. I found a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. But um, it No, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So uh, <laughs> oh, I think it's I think it's on TV this week, Rick. So if you <laughs> miss it this coming Channel Friday, five? you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Bring it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that, There's wouldn't he? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the, for like the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't, I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny <laughs> and why things you do are good. Go on then. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing Rockbusters now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we've just- Oh, we, we keep that going, then we got- well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. 
Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I mean, oh, it's, it's just, it's just, 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 it's just, it's just like you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais right. at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're gonna get three clues, you've gotta get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the th one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was Atomic, atomic kitten, kitten, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, <laughs> um, that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And the initials there are D W. Do you write some of the questions for fifteen to one? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a similar well phrasing. Nice trenches. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what are the initials there, Carl? That person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to oh, get him on telly because yeah. his little face and his so that's, his that's, gestures. That's and the second on. one. The initials being H V. Okay, the top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials are all worn out. Right, H V. <laughs> and, <the, laughs> and the final one um, <laughs> is the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week. Right, <laughs> I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's uh, the what's initials? That? W H for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W H. Incredible. <laughs> I've got it. It's right. a great. It's fantastic. It's desperate. Okay, time to join the record. Time to join. Okay. Remember, you're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda oh. Green on VHS, <laughs> and of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. <laughs> oh God. Bob Dylan. Just like a woman on XFM 104.9. Couple more names, uh, boxing nicknames for you, Rick. I Go think this is uh, from Josh. Uh, Ricky Blue Eyes, I quite like. Uh, and uh, he's also put Toad Rage. <laughs> 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 which, uh, <laughs> which I quite like. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you, our number one fan has emailed again. I'm pleased to uh, announce. Oh. Richard Anderson, Dickie Anderson. He was in touch Anders last week. Anders is back. Anders he is back. loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in, what actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dickie. Thanks for, uh, noticing. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's, he's Because last week, you remember, Carl, he emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably he's done that. Yeah. And he's decided well, to email many? in. Well, how many feet? Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's, he loves this he's show. He's good, yeah. So, uh, thanks, uh, R.A. Thanks for listening. See you later. Missy <laughs> Elliot. Work it on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. Should I do a bit of that? Well, they're, 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 the clues are coming in f are furious. The yeah. answers, I should yeah. say. Yeah. 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 So go on then. Oh, this is what yeah, I Rockbusters is well underway, Carl. Don't worry. You've done yeah. your work there. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just going to tease us, aren't you, with three uh, headlines? If and I'm going to choose one, then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's the way it works. And at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with <laughs> with with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last, he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Go um, on. So the three headlines for you to pick from. We've got um, first one. Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning if you're sick of having me right, here. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... <laughs> when? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Olden times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. we, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you find out these books, well, it just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time. It just sort of says, you know, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, all right, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? 
So, oh, it's annoying that because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note of the time and he'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't <laughs> enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made, you know, there weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So there wasn't as many houses, right? right? So what you what you ended up getting is like uh, you know the rich people having a nice place to live, oh. and the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like uh, people would go round to the mate's house and say, "Look, I haven't got anywhere to live. It's a bit cold. Can you let me stay?" Right? Mm. So they'd go, uh, oh, "All right, then you can stay a couple of days," but they ended up staying for like weeks. Yeah. Right. So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner, and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner like, a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat, and, uh, nice veg, yeah. gravy, and- This happened know, every time, did it? <laughs> it <works. laughs> no. This is where the saying came <laughs> from. Is this what happened, Rick? This, this is, is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the book of vague sayings <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Right, so, uh... So yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, yeah. and the person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some like, sort of a cut off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Uh. Meaning. Right. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's rubbish. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> absolute. Right. Carl, no, why no, no, does no. that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why, do, why, why do they always, in every situation when you want to get rid of a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so we They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. And they are you giving me the cold shoulder? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like, I like to do it cryptically. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. Well, anyway, that, that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh, bacon in the morning! Oh, bacon in the morning if you've had enough of me! So, so uh, come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others. We'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, Brilliant. Uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> Looking forward okay. to that. Okay. <laughs> Nirvana, yeah. in their version of the man who sold the world to David Bowie tune. It's yeah. good. Good tune. Good tune. Taken good from that uh, new Nirvana compilation. I like that version, I like the David Bowie version. You can't decide, can you, Rick? You're touring. In fact, I like the Lulu version as well. Is there a Lulu version? Maybe we should play that one, wow. Rick. Yeah. Was this recorded, what, in the 70s? I think she recorded it about the same time right. as David Bowie. I, I, don't, I don't know if he released it as a single. I think it was just on a. Yeah, so, uh, off the album. Interesting. Carl, Carl, Carl is. Studying. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the next educating well, wiki? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting, right? I was looking on the web But there's no point. Well, it's just I found one about, uh... Um, what's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know. Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. No. Well, yeah. Um, You're always unspec unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse the computer. <laughs> Go! You are. No, I did, I did, it, no I, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight year old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, I put in why to <laughs> confuse the computer. The computer. <laughs> like, the computer going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, well, yeah. Uh, Last week, I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week. Let's do a phone in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say, there's no difference between genius and being a fool. 
No, that's, no, no, but it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. The, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius <laughs> and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's his mum's milk. What are you ta- what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just a title <laughs> for the the story. No, 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 no. It's what? just it's just what would you do? Right. What I do you mean? What would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area. Right. <laughs> what area? In in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem. Are they? George Bush is worried about this kid. Well, Who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight? Imagine it like this, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Mr. Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet. There's yeah. an eight-year-old lad. He likes his mum's milk, yeah. and it's saying, "Is this right? Should it?" No, be it's going not. On? But what? What? What, what <laughs> do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right. You know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what? So, what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> What, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and no, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old, he's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish, and he goes, all right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> Um, and he starts having his, having his milk, right? <laughs> you live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it cause it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you, me- why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought, I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, cause he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> so and you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah, yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see- <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never- <laughs> ah! Oh! So what- oh, God. <laughs> You know, the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all that. No, I know, that's the but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rollers. <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God. You don't see it all <laughs> No. No, listen now. So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You Forget think you're giving a lecture Forget at it. Oxford? It's, it's not coming anywhere. No, go know? on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look right. So. Right. I don't think were those originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've mm. noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. s- old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> and a damn curly whirly granddad, you old <laughs> fool. <laughs> Electric Six, Danger, High Voltage on XFM, 104.9. Sums up the show, Danger, High Voltage, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Ricky Giovanni's with me, Steve Merchant, and the amazing Carl Pilkington. So, other things you don't see, Carl? Got any other ones, or you've obviously been thinking about this? Um. What confuses you? When you look out your window, what confuses you with the world? What, would you walk around going, oh, that's a bit weird? I remember, um, when you were in, uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish. <laughs> Which confused yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can 
Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like what? Like what? Well, d anything. I mean, you could look out the window there and you'll see something you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just, uh, get, uh, Carl's take on, uh, the world's Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a second. Let's have another educating Ricky because well, I think you got sidetracked with your, your, your talk of Well, just the other thing on things you don't see. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now, you don't never see them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too <laughs> obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest, so. Oh yeah, and the, and the, the lady with the head, like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's oh, not yeah, go yeah, through these again. It just raises that. too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> Yeah. Right then. So, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? That's yeah. different. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> bluffing. Um, and. Just bluffing. But it, it's Who was a, the king then? I don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh -huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly. Mm. So, you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because it's like, I don't know, don't know why they're running out of space. But, <laughs> okay. they haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should've just buried them, but, <laughs> yeah, there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> he doesn't need anyone else in the room <laughs> to have, to have a, a conversation dialogue. with himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I've sorted it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. anyway, for some reason, um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's gonna be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to, that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's, that, there you go, you've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because there was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, 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 I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So you've got all these people who are like going around and like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day and, you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yes. So you can imagine like just constant like being depressed. Mm. So, and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh God, what are we going <laughs> to do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said, let's, let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. So they said, uh, what we need to do is, uh, have a big party. Mm, so mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yeah. in a big pile. Mm -hmm. And they're all diseased and that. So yeah. they set, f they set fire to the bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, and they said, let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by. And you know, uh, we'll, we'll have a drink and that and have a chat. We'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So bone it was, fire. it was, it was all the bones. Bomb fire is, is bone fire. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah? Yeah. That's interesting. So that's, that's how it came about. Yeah. In the 1700s. Yeah. That was? Nah, probably, okay. I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably I, earlier. I probably reckon earlier. it was the plague. Mm. Mm. I reckon mm. it came from. But, uh, interesting stuff. Interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, so that, that's, yeah. uh... Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? Do you like the fireworks? So I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. Even no. as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think the adults think the kids love it yeah. and everyone, and, and, and if they just got together and said, should we go this year, they'd all go, no. Yeah, not absolutely. Let's not go yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had <laughs> wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon as a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, <laughs> I'd pay to see. That's a fire display I'd like to see. As it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. That's that excellent. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. Let's <laughs> play the record. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, right, what's this? Go on.
<laughs> what, tell them, go on, go on, just get on with it, cos I just can't believe what you just said. What, what, what are we doing? Are we, uh, the final one? Yeah. Right, the last one, like I said- No, 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 say, say the record. Say yeah. the record you played, they, go on. This is, uh, Free Association. Yeah, brilliant, I right. I wish I would not. Yeah, and what did you just say to me just before this was ending? He just looked, it just looked over at me and went, are there any animals without a brain? No, but hang on a minute. No, 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 wait, wait. And I went, yeah, there's animals that are, he went, oh, I wasn't talking about this, but it's sad. There's a lad born without a brain, and he laughs a lot, and his hearing and his sight's okay. I'll go, well, that's impossible. You, you if, if he's without a brain, all that is impossible. And he went, well, this was in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> no, it was in a book that somebody sent. Right. And I didn't want to bring it up, because it is a bit sad, really. That this, you know, young lad, there's a picture of him sat there with his mum, and, uh, What? Uh, Carl! Well, Carl! I, I forget it. It's impossible. Well, there must have been more to the story, He Carl. can't not have a brain. Hearing and sight is a concept within the brain. It's, that's all yeah, it is, right? Yeah. The ears yeah. are just receptacles. They're just, yeah. So- but, but that's why it was in this book. It was a book of mysteries. Carl, you know if you- if you- if you- <laughs> Carl, if you're reading a book and you see a photo and you guess at what you think the story might be, that doesn't make it true. That no, doesn't make yeah. it fair. I, I looked at it because I thought he looks like an happy lad. Sure. And, and I read about it and I thought, that's weird. Like you've said, the fact that he hasn't got a brain but he can see and he can hear. No! Impossible! Well, uh, impossible. <laughs> okay. Go well, on. Well, I, I don't know who to believe. <laughs> Listen, uh, we haven't done it for a while. White Van Man. I thought yeah, there's some back, interesting questions back. raised today, and yeah. I think it might be nice to well, just call them. Well, I think we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know yeah, his opinions on the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper um, asks a typical white van driver questions uh, his opinions on the week's news, mm. and uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. Good. And then what do you make? Uh, what do you make of? Uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the uh, lottery. Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. Now he's having a bit of good luck. Quite right, him. next one. Are next you one. concerned that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's oh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> right, right, God. Well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, have you been in jail for four months? <laughs> yeah. yeah but sometimes but people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an point. angel of gold now. Or yeah, yeah. Is. Um, yeah. one in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you despair. To you, yeah. You despair. <laughs> yeah. Know, right? yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate, and they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and they got onto the topic of one of the mates who they said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car, talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the to that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, 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 you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't, you don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? He's, he's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like they get up to now. I mean, if- My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight, she was walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C-U-N, right? You are joking. No, she said, oh, you cause she thought it was a big, she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She said, so she was being nice, <laughs> and her mum said, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? Like, just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell right. this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round- Do you think they're twat? Yeah. All that's, right. That's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, 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 not, no, it's weird it. though, because no, hang on, some people from Cornwall use that like saying twit, so 
If people well, are listening to Cornwall, do you know I think, a twit I think is a pregnant goldfish. Well, well, uh, I I learned the uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah, um, twat. <laughs> <laughs> For those that aren't sure. <laughs> I, I learned this at school when I was like 10 or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah. I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly, yeah. apparently. So, you know, <laughs> Carl would be a twit. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home, oh, you twit, you're a twit, and saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you know, yeah. but not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. Great. Well, I couldn't believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid, do it. Yeah. And you're not. And he'd say to my mum, you, 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 pull over, pull over, you're, you're gonna bum at you. And he'd saying this. Then I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I've never brought it up with him. So we'll be driving, you know, I go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible <laughs> word? But he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear that again. Always good to hear that. Suede, animal nitrate. Car was all flustered because there was a, a, a record set up, and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions than sorting out putting records on. Ready? Uh, what? I'm, I'm after so Steve Song for a love. Well, I'll tell you what. You uh, why didn't you carry on with your uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the uh, on the. We we'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover you keep it. Go on. Go on then. Right. Okay. We've right. had uh, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, with Ricky, Educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, we though. Can do that at the end. We can whip Go on, then. Yeah, but we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just oh, do okay. Educating Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on, then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week, and I had much better things, like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest. And for some reason, it made him uh, it, uh, played havoc with his belly, and what? he followed through, and he had to clean up. Shut using, himself. Yeah, using um, using ice and stuff. Why are you telling? Why are you telling me that Brian Blessed? What? Wh in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I'll give it to him. He's an actor and that, but he, he gave that a go. Yeah. Right. He played. What's the know, point of that? You'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's, he's, you know, he's Oh, good. so he's alright. Uh, me, me doing a boxing match, there's no reason he's rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself. Yeah, he did it's, that. It's commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, but what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point, yeah, good. Which it been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've well, probably cleared right. it up by now. Like, but, uh, <laughs> it's it slip on it. I can't even really bother telling you this one, cos- COME ON! Just honest, do it, or do it now! Steve, how are we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means! Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, Talk! Right, right, listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people- <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, th the, thing, that, <laughs> the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't, even, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Right, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> what was the that bonus for? Fight. And blind blessed shitting himself. What are you? What? No, don't you. No, tell me that now. You nearly made me swear. Then just I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this back, Carl. Or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Time's running out. Not that people years ago. When people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And to, and so you never forget the <laughs> time- Presumably if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. 
I See, that, so, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's, you, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all they have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight, we haven't even got time for a last track, we've got an ad break and we've got to give out- Okay, questions. give the answers then, this is right. ridiculous. So, Come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first c clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> That's brilliant! <laughs> That's brilliant! Right. That's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV. That's, yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh! He got a phone call for a woman saying that I haven't heard it, and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, uh, what is it? Uh, someone says, oh, them curtains. She went, all oh, right. He said, you know the thing around the top of the, um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance? And he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, Wet Knee Houston. Right? Wet Knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume, and uh, oh, they're going to There's great places. Remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got uh, the DVD here, they've got Linda Green, they've got Stone Roses, they've got another compilation, and Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true, or have you uh, libeled no, someone it was, an, it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he say? Oh, Come on, time. what did he say? He said, I, I climbed Everest and the, I played Have It With Me Belly. Uh, Let's talk about it next week. We've really run out now. Oh, you're a fool. <laughs>